When I took the test, it was only because I wanted that first aid kit. I had always loved freebies, and anyway, I had only been with one man, with whom I planned to spend my life. There was no way it would come back positive. It did. The man I had been with was someone with whom I was deeply in love. We were a devoted couple and had spoken about marriage from the get-go. I had kept myself for him. So, no. The result couldn't be right. It had to be a mistake. There was no way I could be HIV positive. I would have a second test, and a third, and a fourth. They all came back positive. That was the lowest point of my life. After all, I had always been the good girl. I had never given Umar any problems. In fact, I had worked harder than most at school, over the weekends in Dad's supermarket, and then at home. I was the pick-me girl who had sat close to the front of the class at school and university, who had unprompted done extra readings and additional exam papers, and who had studied when everyone else was parting. I had outworked my peers, so there would be no excuse but to do well. And when I had worked over the weekends, it had been with the single aim of ensuring that we had enough money for food. I was also a devout Christian who had been raised by Ma to be conservative in my views, my dress, and my behavior. It went without saying that I would save myself for marriage. So, no, this wasn't supposed to happen to me. I was a church girl. I was the girl who parents used as an example to discipline their children. I was my family's pride. And yet, test results were positive. What would the rest of my life look like with my HIV-positive diagnosis? How would I live with it? Could I live with it? What would become of everything I had worked for up until that point? What about my high-flying career that had taken me to Germany, New York, Norway, places that were supposed to be out of reach for a girl with my background, but which I had dreamed and worked into being? Most importantly, how would I ever tell Ma?